So as you may have learned concerning the sixth seal, that there is a lot of chaos and terror in the book of Revelation. So the Bible mentioned at the sixth seal, we read it a little bit last week, that the sun is going to be darkened and the moon is, not, is going to turn red. And during that time, the stars are going to be falling from heaven. So this is going to be total chaos, actually. Basically, all the world is coming to an end at that time. Now, during this time, the lost people, they have always mocked God, and they have criticized Him, and that's why they're afraid when finally God comes down and gives them judgment. Now, there are a few things that we're going to cover in Revelation 6. There are two main heresies that we're going to cover. The first heresy that you want to be aware of, which is popular online, is basically they teach that the church will go through the tribulation. So there are people who watch me online who are enjoying my revelation teaching, but they believe that they're going to go through the tribulation. Well, I'm glad that they're watching me online so that they're given truth, but the belief that they're clinging on to is wrong and is actually heresy. The Bible teaches that the church will be raptured before the tribulation. I've given you immensity of proofs at Revelation 4, right? We went through too much of that one. But one of their teachings concerning the church will go through the tribulation is according to verse 17. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So there's a viewpoint called the pre-wrath rapture. Now what that means is this, the pre-wrath view is before the wrath of God. However, the church will go through the tribulation. Okay, so look at this, church is going through tribulation, but the church will not be in the wrath. They're going to be before the wrath. So this is what they're teaching. The tribulation is going on over here. And then at that time, when it comes to that sixth seal, where Jesus Christ is finally coming down from heaven, there's that wrath. See that? We're going to be avoiding the wrath. We're going to be either resurrected or raptured before the wrath. However, when the wrath comes down, you got to realize that we're nevertheless going through the tribulation, even though we're before the wrath. Okay, so, ugh, don't like that. Okay. Anyways, so that's called the pre-wrath point of view. Now, what we Christians teach, and a lot of premillennial scholars teach this, that during the tribulation timeline, this is wrath. So Christians, because we're not appointed to wrath, which is a popular argument premillennialists use, we claim that we're going to be raptured before the tribulation. Why? Because the church is not going through the wrath. But pre-wrathers, a.k.a. also known as post-tribbers, now remember, if you remember the Revelation chapter 1 study, I introduced to you these point of views, right? What is post-tribulation, right? See, they believe they're going to go through the tribulation. So it's until after the tribulation, then they can escape the wrath before the wrath. Okay, so now that you understand that point, I'm going to use these uh, terms like interchangeably. So it's going to refer to the same group, okay? So basically, post-tribbers, they believe that, okay, you're right that we're going to avoid the wrath, but it's not the tribulation. The wrath is after the tribulation. And their proof text is, notice, Revelation 6.17. See that? That's what? At the end of the seals, pretty much. So that's their proof text. However, they don't realize this. The simple answer is that, yes, it's true that in this passage there is a day of wrath, but there is more than one day of wrath in the tribulation. There are days of wrath. See, and then one of the last days of the wrath is right here. That's what we teach. You made that up. <sighs> look at Luke chapter 21. <clears throat> we look at Scripture with Scripture. Scripture. 
Notice that the entire tribulation timeline is known as wrath, days of wrath. So post-tribbers think there's only one day of wrath, but that's not true. There are many days of wrath. The one day of wrath that post-tribbers are thinking about is this one at the end. Okay, let's look at Revelation. I mean, excuse me, Luke 21. Look at verse 21. All right, post-tribbers realize this is about the tribulation. They know that. Verse 21, Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. Now, you might remember, we read this passage in Matthew 24 last week. This was referring to the fifth seal, right? Where the Jews are running for their lives, because why? A bunch of cannibals are out to get them. Right. Human sacrifice, persecution. Right. Okay, what is, so post-tribbers agree this is all tribulation. Now notice what this day is called, verse 22. For these be the what? Days of what? Vengeance. Look at that. Well, it's the days of vengeance, not days of wrath. Are you kidding me? Okay, look at verse 23. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those, what? Days. days? Okay, what is this days? For there shall be great distress in the land, and what? Wrath. wrath upon this people. There's your answer. How about that? So it is days of wrath, this whole entire tribulation timeline. And some weirdos in Arizona would come up with this idea that, oh, we, uh, it's only one day of wrath. No, it's days of wrath. They don't like that verse. So some of them will use a cute argument that, oh, this is referring to the wrath of the devil, not the wrath of God. Okay. <laughs> you know what's so hilarious about that? We're at the sixth seal, right? Did you look at the previous seals? Do you think that that was Satan's wrath or God's wrath? That was God's wrath, right? When he unleashed those horsemen. What did the Bible say when we read Revelation 6 verse 1? Who's the one that opened the seals? It was Jesus Christ, the Lamb, remember? He's the only one worthy to open the seals. And then when he opened the seals, look at all this wrath taking place. The, the uh, war, famine, death, and hell. Right. Okay, so that's referring to Jesus Christ, obviously, right here. But here's a really good verse. Go to Job 14. Job 14 is perhaps the strongest verse to prove a post-tribulation rapture, actually. The strongest verse for the post-tribulation side. So they're going to use Job 14, and in my opinion, this is probably their strongest verse. But it actually turns out to be their weakest link to their Achilles heel. So look at this. Look at Job chapter 14. So post-tribbers claim that people cannot be resurrected and raptured until what? Until after the tribulation, not before. So they're going to claim this. Look at verse 12. So man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. So see, no one can be resurrected. No one can be raptured, so to speak, until what? The heavens be no more. Remember Revelation 6? See the heavens departing as a scroll and all that? So they're claiming, see that? So this res there cannot be a resurrection or rapture before. It has to be after all of this. That's what they're going to claim. Okay, if they want to do that, they've got a problem here. Because look at verse 13. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. Okay, so you're still stuck in the grave. That thou wouldest keep me in secret until thy what? Oh, wrath be... Wait a minute. They just taught that the tribulation is not wrath. But that verse shows right here they're sleeping through the wrath until the end. Wow. How about that? You can't... Because what is this wrath referring to at verse 13? You can't put it here because they believe it's pre-wrath before the wrath. They're still in the grave during the time of wrath. Well, what is that time of wrath that they're in the grave then? Oh, the tribulation. Oh, so then they're going to have to admit the tribulation is called wrath. That's a problem. That's a problem. By the way, 
Here's our simple answer. Well, what's the simple answer to this? It's simple. Job 14 was only looking at one part of the resurrection. This is a post-tribulation rapture, not for the church. It is for tribulation saints. And then there's a second rapture that avoids the wrath. Okay, so notice this rapture, what's going on? They're, going, they're already going through the wrath, right? They're sleeping through the wrath. But this rapture for the church is avoiding the wrath right here. This particular wrath. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians 5. See, the Bible shows you two different raptures. Well, I don't believe in two different raptures, and you don't believe the Bible. Simple. Oh, how can there be two different raptures? What do you mean, how can there be two different raptures? Don't you believe in different raptures? No, I don't. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong. How? Oh, didn't Enoch get raptured? One. Didn't Elijah get raptured? Two. Didn't Jesus ascend, rapture up to heaven? Three. And Jesus even said, your rapture is going to be like him, right? All right, four. There, you believe four different raptures, and you accuse me for believing in two. How about that? Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Look at verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to what? Okay, so appointed means a timeline. God did not put you in this timeline of wrath. Wait a minute. Didn't Job 14, this rapture says, they're going through that wrath? Yeah, they're going through that wrath, then get raptured. But this one says you're not even appointed to that time of wrath. See, you're avoiding it. And keep reading. Here's the rapture. Verse 10. Who died for us that whether there's your resurrection, see? We wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Right. There you go. What are you going to do? There's a resurrection and a rapture that avoids the wrath, and there's a resurrection and a rapture that goes through the wrath, and you have to be raptured, resurrected afterward. What does that mean? Two raptures. Why? Because we're dispensationalists. We rightly divide. It's not a problem to believe two different raptures.